Yeah, sure. But let's let's make different objects so we can give them all a different color. So instead of lofting those arcs, let's instead uh, just assign color to those curves based on their length. Right? If it's a short curve, we'll make it red. If it's a long curve, we'll make it blue. And in between, it'll go purple. So the first thing I'll do is, is I'll hide these curves because uh, if, if, I, if I'm going to draw the same curves again in a color, uh, it's never obvious which one will be actually visible. So I will hide these arcs. And I will even hide those points uh, just to give us a completely clean view. This output gives us all our joint curves. Right? There's 29 planar curves. Really, they're all planar. That's suspicious. Oh. Uh, I can measure the length of all of those curves. I can actually, uh, there's curve length, which measures the length of every individual curve. Oh. And I can have a look at those lengths either in a tooltip here, or if I want to be a bit more persistent, I can use a text panel, which is a little yellow icon, which is very good for inspecting data on screen. So in fact, here you see that uh, all these numbers are the lengths. And these lengths change, right? If, if I change my, my ratio, the, the lengths change. If I change my curves, the length changes. So this is completely uh, dynamic. OK. The shortest length uh, is roughly, what, 15, 14? And the longest one is about 40, 45. OK, so if the length is, I'm going to do this by hand just to avoid doing too much logic. So if the longest length, if the length is 10, we'll make it red. If the length is 50, oh, my bad, 50, we'll make it blue. And in between, we'll make it purplish. To, to, to actually generate these colors, we can use a gradient object. And a gradient object has three inputs. It has a start value, which is a number on this end of the gradient. It has an end value, which is a number on this end of the gradient. And it has a, uh, a parameter along the gradient. So if we start with 10, end with 50, if we sample at, now if t equals 10, we'll get the color that's on the left. If t equals 50, we'll get the color on the right. If t equals 30 in the middle, we'll get the color in the middle. And in fact, we want a unique color for every curve, so the length becomes the gradient parameter. This component now generates all these different colors. In fact, we can look at them in a panel. And here you can see that there's a red, green, blue, RGB notation for all these colors. And I can display that color, well, sorry, I can associate this color with the right curve using a custom preview component. Custom preview allows you to specify geometry, anything, points, meshes, perhaps surfaces, curves, it doesn't matter. And uh, by default, it's pink. But here, we will su supply a, a unique color for every single curve. And I set red when it's short, so that's red. Blue when it's long. And purple in the middle. So now you have unique colors for every single object. And of course, as I change these curves, those colors sort of change uh, in real time if I, I can even nudge them. So this is actually quite a nice way to uh, inspect your data, because you can, you, you can see it in real time as colors on a screen in 3D. Uh, panels are a nice way to inspect data in Grasshopper itself. So if you want to see these numbers, just have a panel there. It's even possible to measure things and display text in 3D if you want to see uh, data directly in, in, on the screen at locations. But, but that's going a bit too far for an introductory course. Uh, 